I'm a surgeon. I'm from Mexico. My name is Balkis Abdurrahman. I'm a medical doctor and currently I'm a fellow of breast medical oncology. So my name is Justin Mann and I'm a uh, PGY4 resident in radiation oncology at New York Presbyterian Hospital, Wall Cornell Medical Center in New York. And my name is Maria Isabel Rizzo. Uh, I come from Colombia, uh, Bogota. Uh, I'm a um, breast cancer surgeon. My name is Naadoko Aiti. I'm a radiation oncologist from Ghana. My name is Nicholas Seorski. I'm a resident physician in radiation oncology from Fox Chase Cancer Center in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I'm really excited about this conference because of the comprehensive approach to patient management. There are specialists from everywhere, radiation oncologists, medical oncologists, surgeons, pathologists, and they give an up-to-date and evidence-based way of managing the, the cancer cases. Thrilled to come to Chicago for the first time and see what a great city it is. Getting to explore the Lurie Cancer Center, I was just really um, impressed by just the state-of-the-art equipment they have available for their patients. This is where all the world-class figures in breast oncology actually meet. And it's a great opportunity to meet those people, to learn from them, and to actually get to see the most updated information about breast oncology and practice. The most important for us is that what are you doing here that we cannot do at home? And what you are doing that we want to go uh, and do at home? That is very, very important for us. It was an opportunity to connect, to know, to improve some ideas, to make some new research. And all that I'm learning here will affect them to help the patient. If I can take a, a few things different that uh, you do here, uh, that will be better for my patients uh, uh, back at home. So that is the most important for us, the patients. This really helps to improve our care of women with breast cancer. It really helps me to see how different people view the disease from all around the world. It's a, an experience I'll never forget. This information I'll get from here will give me an opportunity to relay the information to a wide range of people in Ghana and hopefully improve the um, treatments of patients with breast cancer. To me, I think that life equals um, experiences and experiences like the Linsage Symposium basically helps to polish your personality, to polish your perspective. And so I will walk away with so much passion, new information, friendships. I think this is priceless. Good evening. My name is Alex Zafrovsky. I'm one of the administrators at the Lurie Cancer Center, and I want to welcome you all to the, our annual State of the Cancer Center slash reception. Uh, we started with this video that highlights one of our uh, flagship conferences where over 600 plus faculty across the world, as you can see, uh, come to Chicago and, and hear about the breast cancer uh, diagnosis, treatment, survivorship, et cetera. So uh, you will hear a lot more, not only about uh, educational events that we offer, but also the progress we made on science, clinical care, uh, and all the rest of the activities going on in Cancer Center. So if um, you would please uh, welcome Dr. Liam Platanius to the podium because he'll start off the presentation for tonight. Okay, uh, good evening. Thank you so much, all of you, for coming here today. Before we start, I want to mention something about someone who used to work here and died uh, last week. Uh, Dr. Barbara Krasinska uh, was a scientist uh, working here at the Lurie Cancer Center. She was a research associate professor. She had done some, she had major contributions in the cytokine signaling field, in the interferon field, 
And um, she, she died last week after a, a year and a half battle with pancreatic cancer. So that's a reminder of how deadly disease uh, pan cancer is. And Barbara, although she lost her personal battle with cancer, she made contributions that in the long run will impact other patients. Please keep a few moments silence on the, in the memory of Barbara. So as we start this, I want to thank you. I want to thank everybody in this room. I want to thank everyone, our staff, our physician assistants, our nurses, our scientists, our volunteers, our trainees, our therapists, our NMHC leadership, our university leaders, health system leaders, physicians, donors, the NCI. Thank you all. But most importantly, thank you to our patients who are fighting cancer with courage and dignity and inspire us in our efforts. They are the most important, uh, they, they, they inspire everything we do. So with that, let's get started. We're going to talk about 2018 and what has been happening and where we are going. And let's start like this. Hello, I'm Senator Dick Durbin. Welcome to Chicago. We know that cancer is a scourge across America and few families are spared. 1.6 million Americans will be diagnosed with cancer this year and 66,000 here in the state of Illinois. We've made substantial new investments in the National Institutes of Health medical research that's supported on a bipartisan basis. But we need to do more. We need to deal with the cancer disparities when it comes to treatment and outreach and even research. That's why the Lurie Cancer Center is such an important part of the solution to dealing with cancer in the United States. I believe the Lurie Cancer Center is going to do its best to reduce those disparities, increase the research, and make us a healthier nation. So, so. Uh, Senator Durbin, as you all know, is a strong supporter of biomedical science, and it is an honor to endorse our efforts. So we have a program that we do every year. We go through people and awards. Then I'm going to go over science and education, clinical care, and then give an update on the network, the Northwestern Medicine Integration. And we're going to start with people and awards. And I'm going to ask Alex to come here, and uh, we'll start this. Uh, we, the People and Awards is a tradition that we have to acknowledge the efforts of people who have a major impact in the cancer center. Uh, these are people who work in the cancer center or are sometimes outside the cancer center. And the first two awards are external to the Lurie Cancer Center. So the first one goes to Heather Campbell, Vice Dean for Finance and Administration of the Feinberg School of Medicine. Heather has helped us in many ways. We are very excited that she was promoted to this position and honored to offer her this award. So Heather, you can come up. Take a picture. Congratulations. Here, let's take a picture. OK, thank you. Now, this, there is one more external award, and we have to keep in mind that we wouldn't be able to do anything here if it were not for philanthropy. And we have some great development officers, but this year we decided to give the award to Terry Dillon, Associate, Director for the, Associate Dean for Development in FSM, and I will ask Terry to come down to get the award. <laughs> It is a real pleasure working with uh, Terry, and I'm not the only one who feels like that. Our donors think so, and that's why we're doing well. So, Terry, congratulations. So, so much here. Okay, of course. And the rest now, the awards will be presented by Alex. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there. Yeah, mine are going to be a little longer. Um, so <clears throat> maybe keep the suspense. Maybe I'll talk about it a little bit and then show the picture. So 
<laughs> that take forever, you know. <laughs> it could be anybody. I look under the chair. Uh, so, so this first person actually started working in the cancer center all the way back to 2000 uh, when she came from this other place on the south side that also, I guess, does cancer stuff. Um, she initially worked on, you know, grants and everything, but as, as the cancer center grew, she basically grew with it. So the most recent um, role for her was really being the liaison with our HR department because there's several different, you know, obviously staff and scientists and international students and so on and so forth. So really 18 years of service to the cancer center and she will actually hang it up because uh, January 5th will be her last day she retires and wants to spend time with her granddaughter. So the first awardee uh, on my list will be Anna Wright, if she's in a room. Okay. okay. The, this person has been instrumental in getting our CAR-T clinical trials program up and running. Uh, first CAR-T trials have opened a few years ago, and uh, coordination of these trials, as you know, is, could be a logistical nightmare. And this person has worked tirelessly to establish wor working relationships across multiple departments, cell therapy lab, blood uh, center, inpatient units, outpatient units. Uh, those of you that are involved in this, you understand the level of effort it takes. And she has been the super woman in here, team of one. And uh, recently we are adding to that team. Uh, but without her, we wouldn't be where we are. So if Lori Actes is in the room, she will be receiving this award. Thank you. I, I think, uh, I, I'm sorry if it's embarrassing, but uh, well deserving. <laughs> Okay, this next person, on paper, it says that she's our webmaster, but in real life, she's so much more. She, she helps with the website, she helps. She owns the website, she designs graphics, she's a photographer, as you can see tonight. She can also video, and she's a historian, she's a problem solver. Whenever you say, you ask Victoria to do something, she never says no. She always says, I think we can figure this out. So, next one is Victoria. <laughs> Uh, I don't think this next person's here. I was trying to um, look around, but this next person is, is one of the first people that I have uh, sort of met when I first got this role, and uh, she basically runs over 80 different accounts that we have in our philanthropy. Um, database both on university and the healthcare side and I can tell you that you cannot possibly lose a single dime because of her um, attention to detail so I don't think she's here but um, Sandy who has been with us for a long time also is the room. She's probably working, you know, so that's... <laughs> so, the next one uh, was crucial. Um, the next two, actually, were uh, crucial in this year because, as you know, this was our National Cancer Institute redesignation. We, we did exceptionally well as a whole team. And if it wasn't for this person helping us not only find the space, but squeezing us into different mocks and, and always finding a spot, whether it's Prentice, Feinberg, or somewhere else, Roberta and her team were a lifesaver that should not be underscored. And, and this one, where I think maybe Leon will take some credit for the next person, because um, even when we go to other NCI centers, uh, they mentioned when they came here for the review how great the Greek food was uh, when they came here. And, and Brandon and his team in catering really had done a tremendous job working with our 
professional education team all year, so he deserves an award as well. Yeah, they have events um, in Prentice, I think, tonight, so they couldn't come. The, and last but not least, and this person is here because I, I saw this person earlier. I'm not going to say gender, I guess. It's, a, it's suspenseful. But, <laughs> but after we, we uh, were able to, to achieve that exceptional rating that you're aware of, and if actually if you look around this building, you'll see these, uh, uh, I don't know what they're called, but banners, I guess. They're, they're laying up there that says rated top cancer center nationwide. And not only those things, but also big conferences like ASCO and ASH and, and all these different campaigns that we're trying to launch to improve our reputation score because currently we're, we're number 12 in the U.S. World News Report, but we're not really happy with that, and we want to be in the top spot there. And the person that works on this tirelessly is Andrew Huff. So if he would come up. And I don't know if this was a glamour shot, Andrew, or... <laughs> Thank you. So now I'll return back to the regular scheduled programming. So back to the program. So, so let's, um, uh, we also want to acknowledge some people whose efforts really impact the cancer center. And we, we thought it would be important to acknowledge clinical investigators who have the highest accrual in clinical trials. So number one is Robert Lewandowski, Interventional Oncology and Radiology. <laughs> number two is Mark Agulnik. Mark, you are around, I've seen you. Mark has been tremendous. <laughs> number three is Aparna Kalyan, also from Himong. I don't see her around. She has been a big surprise, actually, that she made it to the number three spot. <laughs> number four is Jeff Sosman. Jeff, thank you for your effort. Number five is Yang Che, he monk also. Number six is Deva Mahalingam, also from he monk. <laughs> number seven, Lisa Flam, he monk. Number eight, Rimas Lucas, Neuro-Oncology. <laughs> Number nine, Daniela Matei, uh, Gainiong. <laughs> and number 10, and we will have to stop at 10, is Mary Mokehi, he monks. <laughs> so these people made a huge difference. And trust me, number 11, 12, and so on did great too. But we had to stop somewhere. So I also want to acknowledge other people who play a key role in our clinical research efforts, clinical trials efforts. Here you can see the disease teams that we have, and this is the place where trials are prioritized. And there, these people had more than 80% attendance. Uh, they have been all great, and there are some prominent names there, but no pictures this time, it's too many. So, and uh, I also want to thank some key leaders, some depart the department chairs who have helped our efforts over the year to recruit people, and they, they are from many different departments. The Cancer Center is strong because we work closely with uh, department chairs and some other uh, institute leaders. And everyone here has made a significant contribution over the last year to the Cancer Center efforts. So thank you to all. Now, just a reminder, we are here because we are serving uh, with the Chicago area. The, this is our catchment area. We have uh, cancers with high mortality in our area, with heavy disparities. And you can see here, these are the analytic cases that we see every year that have been increasing. So we have a difficult job to do de dealing with very uh, difficult to treat cancers in a challenging area geographically. So what makes us though strong and what makes us different is our science and our education. And you know, let me give you an example of what that does. 
if I can get it to start. On the Medical Watch, research. In the quest for a cure or even an option for therapy to conquer cancer, there are researchers working tirelessly and patients willing to try anything to survive. Meet Melanie Moreno, a single mother who on her birthday five years ago got quite a surprise, a breast cancer diagnosis. Obviously fear, I was nervous. Melanie took all the required treatments, yet after she was finished, her cancer had actually grown and spread in her lungs. It seemed like no matter what I was doing, it, it wasn't enough. She came to Lurie Comprehensive Cancer Center, where they offered her the chance to be in a clinical trial, testing two immunotherapy drugs already approved to treat lung and melanoma cancers. Immunotherapy drugs work by different mechanisms to help the body's immune system fight and target and eliminate cancer. For two years, she got infusions of the immunotherapy drugs while doctors monitored her disease. This is her most recent CT scan on the right after almost two years on the clinical trial and all of those lymph nodes have shrunk or nearly disappeared. And I'm still here. <laughs> so it is really remarkable what modern science had done. These immunotherapy trials were only in the lab a few, a few years before. We could not even think that this could come to be treating patients with responses. And it shows the power of science uh, and the impact it has in saving lives. It's truly remarkable. And we are making an impact. What we do in this cancer center is that. We have exceptional basic science that we work to translate to the clinic, and this has an impact. Here are some examples of faculty who have national uh, leadership positions. Leo Gordon co-chairs a, a large ECOG study that, that will redefine the way we treat Hodgkin's lymphoma, and Daniela Matei, uh, the same thing for uterine cancer in the chair of GSG. And let me give you an example of someone who unfortunately is not here to, tonight, but also reflects this impact. Good evening. My name is Olga Frankfurt. I'm a leukemia and transplant physician. I'm a co-director of leukemia program at Robert H. Laura Comprehensive Cancer Center, and I also run adult umbilical cord blood transplant at Northwestern. In the last year, five new medications have been FDA approved for, for treatment of acute leukemia, in contrast, in prior 40 or 50 years, there was only one drug that received an FDA approval. It is very exciting and humbling to be part of such development as Northwestern have been involved with every single drug that came to clinical practice today, and we certainly are involved with many more um, uh, clinical trials that are ongoing. So we five FDA approvals in acute leukemia Every single one of them changes lives. And here is a group of nine drugs, and you can see investigators who participated that got FDA approval and our investigators played roles, either leading roles or uh, they, they were major uh, participants, showing that how what we do here changes the way we practice medicine. But this will never happen if we didn't have stroke basic science. Uh, there would be no clinical research, there would be no clinical practice if it wasn't for basic science. Basic science, unrestricted, Im imaginary basic science, is what defines what will be ultimately, years later, clinical research and clinical care. And I'm going to describe a few examples here of major breakthroughs that have come from the Lurie Cancer Center that will be at some point, I'm confident for most of them, that there will be uh, new treatments for cancer patients in the future. And let's start with this gentleman, Marcus Peter, who, who defined a new pathway in the cell that kills cells. And you can see a quote he gave in an interview in the news. It is like committing suicide by stabbing yourself, shooting yourself, and jumping off a building all at the same time. Now think about it. If you stab yourself, then shoot yourself, how are you going to jump off the building? But in this case, <laughs> it really happens. This is an amazing, powerful control um, system within uh, our uh, 
in, in our genetics that, you know, when it gets activated, it can kill cancer. In the future, modern cancer treatments may use that. Another example is, a more clinical example, is breast cancer gel treatment. And this is Sima Khan again, all over in the news, about, and here is your quote, it's a way of delivering the drug to the breast and protecting the rest of the body. You know, drugs have complications. She has defined these gels that, you know, could also become a mainstream treatment in the not so far future. Then we have work in cancer stem cells. The Huiping Liu is a junior investigator here. By the way, Marcus, I just noticed Marcus here. Marcus, are you there somewhere? He's, he's wearing that. He's trying to avoid killing himself. So, he's, so, so and here is um, what he said in an interview, actually. I'm very passionate about uh, understanding cancer stem cells or targeting cancer stem cells. That is really, a, I feel, not only a passion, but also a mission. The mission is to find a cure for cancer and also stop cancer. The reason I actually uh, pursue medicine is because of my middle school teacher who died from leukemia. You see, people get driven by personal experiences. And that's an example of, she has done some amazing work published in Cancer Discovery. And she says she was driven by her teacher who died from leukemia. But talking of leukemia, we have like a world-class group here really that is unparalleled in cancer epigenetics. And that's the group of Alice Latifor, the chair of biochemistry, uh, who is also director of the Simpson Query Institute for Cancer Epigenetics and uh, leader of our SEND program now. And here is his quote. We demonstrated over 20 years ago that transcription elongation rate is central for cancers, but nobody had been able to control it. Now we have developed for the first time, chemical two compounds that can. This is real. This is how breakthroughs happen. You go over the years defining basic, important basic science mechanisms, and then you translate it. And here is Ali. I always like to put videos of Ali asking for money. But... What basically regulates our life, our cells, and who we are are our proteins. If you understand how do these proteins function, what families or complexes they exist in, and what their mutations or deletions or translocation does to those complexes, we can find a way of treating the patients who have those abnormalities. My goal is to ease the suffering of the kids who have acute myelogenous leukemia. This is a nasty disease. This misregulation of transcription elongation is a cause of disease in these kids. Understanding basic mechanism and biochemical processes are going to be instrumental for development of targeted therapeutics. So, you know, his goal as a basic scientist is to ease the suffering of kids with acute myeloid leukemia. That's where you have the power, when you can translate cutting edge basic science to the clinic. And I cannot keep showing examples. I'm going to show one more, a last one in a very important area. And that's the area of cancer metabolism. And this is an area that we are really lucky to have here, Nav Sandel, who is one of the leaders in the field. Now, this is a quote of Nav from a talk he gave at the NCI in 2018, in March. Mitochondria are not bad actors. And here is the video of Nav giving his talk at the, at the NCI where he discusses that. And we thought, well, maybe the mitochondria could also be that generator of ROS. Uh, people didn't like that idea because, and their simplistic notion, mitochondria only generated ROS when they were damaged. And this explained neurodegeneration. Maybe this explained heart failure or the free radical theory of aging, and this whole idea that mitochondria are bad actors. And, and so one of the things we continue to show over the years was that that's not quite true, right? In many instances, we think mitochondria do release reactive oxygen species under physiological stimuli to control a variety of important transcriptional nodes, including notch signaling, HIF, and F-kappa B. So Nav's work is truly remarkable, and we all know that. It has redefined the function of mitochondria. It has major implications for the future of medicine, like metabolism, like the whole field of metabolism has, and he's one of the leaders. So, and I will have to stop here. I will totally apologize to other super basic scientists who are here, but that shows you, gives you an idea of what amazing science we have here at the Lurie Cancer Center. So, we have, this has, you know, we have been also growing our portfolio of funding. 
I just want to acknowledge we have two large major grants that were received recently, a LAPS grant for clinical trials between Al Benson and Daniela Matei, Dave Sella, uh, who is our associate director for cancer control and prevention, got a very large uh, integrated comprehensive cancer center grant uh, that will use our network. We just submitted the renewal of our cancer prevention grant, and we have several big applications in process. One is the leukemia score application, John Crispino and Ali, prostate spore renewal that will go in, the breast spore, and a new leukemia spore that we're working together with the University of Chicago. This is actually when, is Ali with Wendy Stock on the clinical side from UFC. So this is Alex's stuff here. So, so <laughs> at the same time, we have a lot of training programs. We try to educate our different faculty in all these different areas. Here you can see a large number of training grants and other support we provide. And professional education is a big uh, deal here. You can see again, that's uh, a, a large uh, Sandeep Samandi somewhere here. He has been heading a large uh, head and neck symposium that attracts now people all over the country. And this is something that just start, started uh, two years ago. And this is the kind of thing that impacts our reputation, our scores in the US news report and other things. Of course, I'm not gonna talk about uh, the uh, annual Lynn Sage uh, Breast Cancer Symposium that uh, Bill Gradzer uh, chairs for many years now. This is like a big deal in the, in the world of oncology. People from all over the world come here and is one of the top uh, uh, breast cancer symposiums. And now we have Massimo also, and he is a key part of this. So this thing has had a major impact. We also have our nursing conferences. That's um, the highest, recently we had the highest numbers of registrants ever. Again, for, for clinical care, nurses are at least as important as doctors, believe me. And we have been having great educational training programs here, and we are proud of that. And again, these are many other uh, ways we have to promote that. We have major community impact. And uh, um, we, one example is the Chicago Check that is uh, chaired by, um, uh, by Melissa Simon. We also have the Chicago Cancer Initiative. We recently established a partnership with the Chicago Fire Department. And we, we started now doing a, you know, uh, genomic studies in firefighters to identify genes that may predispose them to cancer. And, and we have a lot of advocacy efforts. Uh, we, 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 we influence legislation. And that's important because there is some legislation that is central to our efforts to fight cancer in the state of Illinois. So clinical operations, we have continuing to see growth. <laughs> You can see here the new patient encounters that keeps growing. And you know, we have uh, really our numbers are getting better and better. And as you heard, we are number 12 now by US News and World Report. We have been number one in Illinois for a long time. And we have a superb team uh, led by our senior leaders here, Nick Rave, Rebecca Kerr's. Rebecca is, is there. Sarlota is somewhere here also. I've seen Sarlota and uh, uh, more recently, Andrew uh, Bresnahan, and they have been so many highlights from starting our CAR T cell therapies to all these things. I cannot go through all of that, but our clinical team never stops to amaze me. They are so dedicated and so efficient in what they do that is really amazing. So they, it has been a great work. Now, we also work to integrate across the Northwestern medicine system. What is gonna really strengthen our, uh, our research and our ability to, to bring our science to the patients will be the large integration. We have an amazing NMHC leadership team that has developed this uh, large Northwestern medicine system now. So we have been working with them to, for this vision. We wanna have a premier integrated academic health cancer system, and we have been going through a process, a strategic plan. These are the hospitals, you know, and they keep growing. If I say a number now, I could be wrong, because by tomorrow we may have another one on board. But there are several, 
in, in west, northwest, north, and uh, you know, it keeps growing. And we have been working, we created what we call the Clinical Cancer Executive Council. That was the first thing that I did when I became a director, trying to bring key leaders from all these hospitals together in a coordinated effort to integrate the oncology practice and research. Because if we can have research and bring our trials across the network, it will be even more powerful. Now we move to a second phase, and Julie Kramer, who is the president of NMH, and myself were asked for, from Dean Harrison to coordinate an oversight committee to create the oncology service line, and we are working on this. We have first three targets, three uh, working groups, where you can see the leaders here, brain tumor, GU cancer, and breast cancer. And we, I, I'm optimistic that this will happen, in, you know, that this will keep advancing uh, fast so we can have an integrated oncology service line. Here you can see our US News and World Report. Again, we started from NAT ranked in 2007. We went up and down. Now we have reached our highest number ever, 12. And again, if you, if you think of all the cancer operations that exist, the cancer centers, which are not, of course, all uh, uh, comprehensive, we are in the top 3% nationwide. And finally, I want to just uh, uh, talk for a second about philanthropy. Philanthropy is extremely important to us because it allows us to, to use funds to get new ideas, to fund science without restrictions. That doesn't require that, I mean, we have internal review mechanisms, but we try to have out of the box idea that will transform the field. And for a disease like cancer, that's what you need. You need out of the box ideas that will change completely the way you approach cancer. So we have a lot of foundations that support our efforts. Over the last year, we had several remarkable events. One was the creation of the Malnati Brain Tumor Institute that had its event. We now have our Polsky Urologic Cancer Institute that will be chaired, uh, uh, directed by Ted Safer that will really strengthen the cancer center in urology. And then we have other events like the H Foundation, the Cancer Survivors Work. We have this thing, the Hippocratic Cancer Research Foundation, which is a foundation that has been growing a lot. And I'm gonna give you a clip, and that will be the last one from the event we had uh, three weeks ago where there was an announcement made, and here we go. With that being said, I'm thrilled to stand here this evening to let all of you know that the Board of Directors of the Georgia Meisenberg Foundation for Charities unanimously approved a grant request led by Dr. Platanius for two and a half million dollars. We are excited and honored to continue our partnership with Northwestern Medicine. No other program of this kind exists across academic centers nationally. So it is very kind of him what he said, no other program exists among academic centers nationally. And I think he has a point. We have some unique strengths here that you don't see in other places. We are not a freestanding cancer center like Sloan Kettering, but we have unbelievable basic science in areas that other places cannot afford to have, from engineering to chemistry to, to physical sciences, to nanotechnology, to, to epigenetics, and so on. And uh, we have great opportunities. And I really think that in the next phase of growth of the Cancer Center, we will have more impact. And the impact can be seen here. This is from our survivors walk, when we have more survivors who win their battles. So thank you all for everything you do. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the event tonight. So you can go out to the reception.